Here's a printed sheet, warm from the photocopier, not quite. And these are the tools I'm going to use. They're all very ordinary things. The only thing that's slightly unusual is this large bottle of Yoohoo, which you can get online. You can use Yoohoo out of a tube if you like, or any other kind of glue. The first thing you have to do is to score the sheet. This is a blade which is not terribly sharp and what I'm going to do is to simply lightly run it along the lines like this on the sheet. It's not cutting through the paper, it's just cutting slightly into it so that I can make a clean fold later. You could do this with a ruler but I prefer to do it freehand because you can see more clearly where the point of the blade is meeting the paper. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of the sheet, holding it up to the light so I can see where I'm putting the glue. And this is just on the bladed weapons and only on one side that stick up and will be a little bit vulnerable. You don't actually have to do this, this is something that I just do myself. You could always later on put a little bit of PVA if you wanted to onto the sheet when it's been made. PVA dries very very firmly it, it makes, the, uh, makes the soldiers nice and crisp when they're done and that is the first process and that's put aside now to dry. The next thing is to cut out the strip from the sheet. Just do it carefully using a long pair of shears and your little cutting out scissors. Cutting this accurately will help you to make them accurately when you come to fold them and put them together. So, There's the first strip cut out. So the next stage is to fold the strip um, and you fold it in a sort of concertina manner along the length of the score line. This little strip in the front here is the locator. That's where the front rank will fit. So the rest of it is simply a matter of working down the strip, keeping it nice and level. as you go along. So that's the strip folded. We glue one side of the soldier part of the strip. I'm using Yoohoo glue which dries very stiffly. It's a bit smelly but PVA glue is also good. So I've glued all three sections you just fold them up, making sure that everything lines up properly. If everything is in line, when you come to cut them out, they should be nicely registered. They won't always be, but don't worry too much about that. They'll always be registered from the front, which is the main angle at which we look at them. I keep a bit of kitchen towel, a bit of kitchen towel handy, because as you're squeezing out, some of the glue tends to squeeze out onto your fingers. Gluey fingers is a bit of a problem with this process. Okay, so there is the strip glued, and that is now put aside for a couple of hours at least. I like to prepare six, I do two, two sheets at a time, I like to prepare six of these little stands, put them to one side, ready for the process of cutting out. The next stage, once the strip has dried, is the cutting out. Now it folds quite nicely so that you can get at it. Um, there's a little bit of colour just above the score line there. So I cut just above that so that when it's actually being made, it doesn't open out. You don't get a gap. So, so long as you can see the point where the scissors meet the paper, it's really very easy to cut them out. I'm keeping my scissor hand 
steady, I'm resting it, and I'm turning the paper. And that way you can just work your way around the outline. You might think it looks very difficult, in fact it's really very straightforward. Don't be tempted to leave a big fat white border around the figure. I don't like that. That's not how I design them. I design them to be to try and imitate the the work of my friends, the Perry twins, really. And you can't do that with a big fat white border around them. This pair of scissors, by the way, came from Wilco's and cost very little more than a pound, I should imagine. So it's not necessary to use very elaborate equipment. So we continue to work around the edge. From the front, always from the front. Because the front is very clean, the drawing. The back has got an, a border of grey um, colour so that if you do make a slight error of cutting, it won't be a problem. It won't show as a big white glaring edge. So, as you can see we're almost round. Remember, keep the cutting hand steady and move the piece. Again, just above the score line. Yeah, that's the first it's the first side cut out. So I'm just coming to the end now of the second rank. I'm going to cut the strip at the front, the locator strip, I'm going to cut it round in an arc. So that's the stand ready. Well it's not the stand ready because there is also the front rank. Now the front rank I've already cut him out. But the reason for relocating onto a stand, onto a locator strip, is because I'm going to cut out between the front legs. They are, it is coloured, so this is optional, but it makes such a difference to the appearance of the troops. The English Civil War book had three stands which did not have cut out front legs. But actually, for the time it takes to do, which is just a moment, the appearance is dramatically better. So from now on, the rest of the books will have this system with a locator strip for the front rank and a front rank that I encourage you oops, to separate like that. The next stage is to put the stand onto the base and for this I use impact adhesive rather than you which is good but doesn't have the same grab that this has so a little glue on there turn the stand upside down place it on the bottom and center it let's get it more or less centered down the line you can use the scissors just to press down the ground between the ranks give them a little twist the next stage is just to trim alongside the stand Oops. and then we're going to glue and fold under the bottom of the stand so it makes a nice neat front. Again we're using impact adhesive so we fold each other under and just leave it for a moment. I could have left that for a few moments to dry off and it would stick instantly. So, so that's the base finished. Um, I'm now going to stick the front rank onto the locator strip. This locator strip has been attacked with a crazy pair of pinking shears that I bought to give it a nice grassy effect. 
It hadn't occurred to me, but Andy Callan, who was making some of these, decided he wanted it grassy. And then I remembered my pinking sheet. So, press those onto there, and the impact adhesive grabs straight away. Now this is a, a what we call a command stand, since it's officers and standard bearers. So I'm just going to put a little glue on this standard. I'm putting a new blade into my Stanley knife because I'm going to show you how to make pikes. I realised when I first started to make English Civil War paper soldiers that if I couldn't make pikes we were in trouble. And I tried all sorts of things before I actually tried paper. But using this method makes a really successful pike but it needs a Stanley knife with a new blade in it, it needs a steel straight edge and it needs a decent surface to cut up. This is some gash paper, spare paper that I use for uh, bases, but it makes a good base to cut into. So I'm going to show you that process next. The first thing you need to do is to cut out this blank area from the sheet. This, on the, in, the, in the Wars of the Roses book, only one unit has pikes, and it's the Swiss German pikemen from the Battle of Stokefield. So you cut out the brown square, it's got a score line down the middle, you score it and fold it. And then you apply glue. I'm using Yuhu again because it dries nice and flat. If I used PVA it would be kind of wobbly. Now, the thing with pikes is you glue the whole sheet, both sides, and don't leave any spaces because if you leave spaces when you come to cut the pike, the pike out, you'll find that it will delaminate halfway down the middle. What we're making here is a laminate of glue and paper, a paper and glue sandwich. And it turns out that this material is a really, really strong surface. And into that, we put a sheet of paper and you close it you enfold that sheet of paper now this has to be set really well so what I like to do is to leave it overnight to dry because when you cut it you need it to be nice and stiff and you cut along the top and Put yourself some space at the back so, that goes away. so you've then got that sheet glued very very firmly to that piece of paper and I'm going to sellotape that to my board so that it doesn't move <coughs> while I'm cutting it so that's nice and firm and that's ready now for me to lay on the steel straight edge. So there's the piece prepared. On goes the straight edge. I try and aim for a sort of fat millimetre really, if you can imagine that. Keep the blade nice and low. And cut straight through. That's the first one. You'll soon find that you get your eye in doing this job and you can turn out pikes in large numbers. So when you know how many pikes you need, have a pike making session. Get everything prepared. Cutting. Get everything prepared and make all the pikes you need in one go. You'll soon be turning them out in their dozens. It is possible, just about, to cut them with scissors. But that makes them rather curly and strange and you can't really tell 
what it is that you're making. You can't tell how big it is. So, that's the process for making pipes. The next thing to do, sorry, before you go away, the next thing to do is to just snip the end into a point because you don't want your chaps not to have pointed pikes. So all the pike men figures have this arms raised position and you bend their hands forward slightly then you get the pike and a little line of glue is all you need. That goes inside the hand and along the front of the figure. And that basically is how you fix them into position. You can do it when the stand is finished on its base. But I like to do it like this. It's easier to get at. I've shortened one of the pikes to carry a, a standard there. Um, and you'll find that the pikes really keep their composure remarkably well. They don't tend to go too wobbly. Occasionally, after you've left them for a while, you might find you need to groom them slightly. But they, um, they're remarkable. I've, I've had some that I made more than a year ago, and they're still, they're still fine. So I think it's a, a pretty durable way of making pikes.